Hi, I'm Bart Hansen. I'm the owner and lead instructor for CrushLivePoker.com. The following hand comes from our call-in show that we record at 4.45 p.m. Pacific Time every Monday. If you want to call in your hand, check out the instructions in the video description. All right, man, you got a hand for us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will try to be uh, quick. Um, so 2-5, we're about 1K effective, but uh, stacks don't end up, uh, effective stacks don't end up mattering uh, too, too much. Um, Bad Euro guy uh, opens like UTG two to twenty five. Mm -hmm. um, two people call uh, behind him. Small blind calls and we defend with sixes with no heart. In the big blind. In the big blind. Yeah, okay. Sure. Yep. Uh, so we get a good flop for sixes. We get queen jack six two hearts. The queen and the jack are hearts. Okay. Um, check through to the Euro, who bet 35 into about 125. So queen jack, queen jack 6, you have bottom set. The Euro, who opened from what, like? Like UTG 2. Plus 2? Okay. Yeah, plus it, 2. How much did he bet again? Uh, he bet 35 on the flop. Okay, so he bets 35. Everyone folds. Everyone folds, and I check raise to 135. Okay. For obvious reasons. Right. Uh, I, don't think, I don't think the plus is particularly interesting. He thinks for a bit and calls. And now I think we get what is probably the most interesting possible turn card in the deck, which is the six of hearts. So you quad up. So I quad up, and the front door flush comes in. Right. And now I have no idea what to do. Because I have absolutely no idea how I could ever bluff here. Well, you could have king ten. I mean, you want me to talk about the bluffs that you could have here, well, especially when. Well, no, the, the the difficulty is like when he bets into five people. Like it's difficult to like, like yeah, I could. I guess you can ten with a heart, but it's like I'm not a hundred percent sure that bet would be profitable when he bets into that many people. Right, I understand what you're saying. Like the, you, the, the strength of the range right. on the prior street makes it difficult for me to arrive on this street with a bluff. Right. I mean, you could have king 10 with the king of hearts or king 10 with the 10 of hearts or 9-10 taking the bottom part of a gut shot with a heart and continue on the turn. I mean, that's my initial reflex for what you would have here basically as a bluff. But I had right. asked Conlon about... And those about, are all hands I would have. Yeah. What's that? I was just going to say, those are all hands I would have if I was heads up with him. Right, those right, if you were heads up. Right. But everybody folded, though, too. It's kind of interesting because if some, sure. some people called, you might actually throw those into a check raise if you think this guy would like fold like a queen or something like that. But normally, though, from out of position, you don't want to check here because you don't want to let it get checked back. I would just continue to bet. I mean, I, I might bet like 150 or something like that here. Mm -hmm. What did you do? Well, I checked because I, I honestly couldn't think of a bluff. Uh, and I think that like I unblock all the top pairs. If he has, I mean, he's a nitty red. So, like, mm -hmm. if I bet and he has black kings or black aces, like, it's turbo fold. Like, it's over. Oh, okay. Um, if he has a flush, he's he's 100% going to bet. Like, a recreational player would never consider any of this stuff. I would right. bet through and do, like, whatever. He'll he'll call me off with black aces and talk about what a bad beat he got. Um, but this guy's a nitty red. So, mm -hmm. I decided to check because I think he's going to bet all of his flushes. Uh, if he's got, like, an over pair or ace queen with the ace of hearts, there's a chance he catches up over both that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so he thinks for a bit and checks back. Okay, so it goes check, check as sort of what we would think would happen. Yeah. Um, the river is the seven of hearts. Okay. So now we have four hearts on board. Right. Um, and now I decide to bet. I mean, I think that if he has a big heart, he will, certainly if he has the ace of hearts, he will, he will never fold and he will possibly raise mm -hmm. um but I, i'm also not sure like if i check like he's going to bluff very much but it seems kind of strange like maybe he would but so how much did you bet i bet 200 okay i mean he's probably not going to raise that amount i mean you could block throw like a reverse block out there bet like 50 mm -hmm. or 75 i mean there's two things right like so if you if he has got the ace of hearts somehow or the king of hearts and he bets and then you check raise I mean, your hand mm -hmm. looks 
It's interesting, though, because you would have three bet off with, like, queens and jacks, right, pre-flop quite a bit. I, I only have one boat. Yeah. Right, right, right. I only have, so, I only have you know, you know, I don't know if you're calling, like, with queen six suited here or something like that from the big blind because you're getting a price because all these other people called. So I wouldn't, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it, yeah, I mean, it's kind of interesting, right? But I don't know if he's going to be that deep of a hand reader. That's why I probably right. would just continue to sort of bet small on the turn and try to get value from those heart hands that might just check back. You know what I mean? But, mm -hmm. you, yeah, I mean, you could block here, like, 40 or 50. But, again, it's almost the same thing as, like, basically check raising the river. Because if you block 50 and you raise to right. 200 and you three bet all in, that's sort of the same as you checking him betting 200 and then you check raising, right? You know what I mean? It's like, right. mm. so you bet 200. Yeah, I bet 200, and he, like, he tanked for a long time, which I believe was probably him thinking about raising. Mm -hmm. um, and he calls, and I table my hand, and he sort of frustratingly uh, exposes uh, ace-queen with ace heart. Oh, wow. So, so do, you, do you feel like you wish you had bet the turn now? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, the, the, the interesting thing is I was talking to some guys who were – going over it and running uh, some sims on it. And it's interesting what Pio does in this spot is it bets really small on the turn with mm -hmm. its entire range. Right. And mm -hmm. then checks the river. Checks the so river on a fourth like heart. Third, and then it checks the river on a fourth heart because I think basically because they can never have the ace of hearts. Yeah. And it can almost never have a boat. So it checks and check raises. I mean, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, that's interesting. I mean, I, I just think that I would continue to bet the turn to get called here, obviously, by – to continue to get called by a heart. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. and it's like, well, even if you have a flush here, because you mm -hmm. don't have really many full house combos at all, right? What? Or any. So all you have is quads, right? Quad sixes. Let's right. say that you don't have queen six and jack six, right? If you continue mm -hmm. to bet the turn – well, you're going to have a lot of flushes, right? But you right. might have queen jack, too. Now, he mm -hmm. specifically has ace queen with the ace of hearts, but he's probably going to continue on with a high heart, though, right? If you bet one right. third of the pot, so that's what he's supposed to do. So you don't want to allow him to check back. So it's interesting on the turn because you don't have many full house or quad combos that I would continue to bet because, yes, your hand is going to be queen jack or hearts, but you still get the right. value from the high heart call. So that makes sense to me. If I bet on the turn, now the river, if the river was a heart, I can sort of see what the solver says is that you're, you know, you would want to, that you would want to check raise. It's it's a super slim right. range scenario because you just don't have many full houses on the river. So I don't know. Right. I mean, of course, like, it's, it's difficult to some extent to implement the, the sort of things that Pio is suggesting here. Because it raises all kinds of hands on the flop that right. no like human right. would raise. Like it raises pocket eights because right. of blockers. Right, right, you right. Know, yeah. Raises like the bottom end of a gut shot. And it's like so it ends up with more blocks right. on the right. turn that allow it to bet. It but would yeah, have been it would be interesting though, because I, I I'm assuming that if you check to check raise the river, like the guy's supposed to bet call on the, you know what I'm saying? Like uh, that's why it that's why it might check raise, because if the guy has the nut flush, he's supposed to bet call. Basically, it's probably it's probably similar to um, because he can never have a full house. It's probably similar to or I mean, I guess you get a queen and jack. It's probably similar to like the Andy hand where it's like he's probably supposed to bet call some of the nut flush and fold some of it. Yeah. Somehow, because he can't fold. He can't call all of it. You're talking about the like, Andy hand where he has hand. top full house. You mean against nines? You mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Where it's like right. in theory, he's probably supposed to bet fold some of it and bet call some of it because it's the best hand he can ever have. But he right. can't call all the time because the other guy can always have quads, basically. Yeah. yeah, I just, like I said, like as a reflex, I would just continue to bet the turn here to try mm -hmm. to get called by a high heart. And, um, yeah, the river, I'm trying to think if I was in your opponent's position and I had the ace of hearts on the river, it's just one of those weird, weird things where it's like, well, I guess maybe I would raise here thinking that you might have, like, the king of hearts or you, you know, like right. one of those hands. Um yeah, it's kind of it's kind of interesting. Well, yeah, it's similar to the way that I thought about the the um the the turn in the sense that like if I was against a recreational player and he bet into me like that and I had the ace, I would probably raise. Mm -hmm. 
because he might just frustratingly call with the King of Hearts. But it's so difficult to bluff here that against someone who was confident, I'd be skeptical about raising even the not flush here because what are they going to call with and how can I decide when to bluff? Right, right. Thanks so for the call, Jesse. It gets very weird. All right, take it I easy. appreciate it. All right. Hey, guys, if you like what you've seen here, please click on the subscribe button and you'll get notified every time we put up a new video. And if you want to check out CrushLivePoker.com for the first month free, use the code YTA200. Click on the link right there.